What's going on everybody? It's Christian here. And so today I'm gonna to be giving you a quick, uh, kind of a breakdown for one of the short films I did. It's a Jesse Born Room Challenge. So I got a lot of questions about how I did um, certain effects and they're actually quite simple. Most notably um, where I had uh, the hooded man appear in the back um, through the glass door. And the second one is how I did a glitch effect on it. So I'm just gonna show you how I did this really quick. Let's get my headphones on so I can make sure I hear. So this is the scene in question. And basically what ends up happening is um, the main character walks in and there's nothing there and boom, we have a little glitch effect where the hooded man comes in and he's kind of just hanging out there. So as you can see on my timeline right here, I basically have the actual clip. If I take the eyeball and take this away, basically the original clip is down here and it has the actor walk into frame. So you can see that here. So that's when it causes the effect. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to kind of just have him appear instead of having him walk in there to add more of a kind of menacing effect to it. So right here, I then created a nested sequence. Um, after I duplicated this clip and moved it up, I created a nested sequence. And then in here is basically where I did all the heavy lifting for that clip. So what ends up happening is this clip kind of just plays out as normal. And as you can see here, where this, this nice black spot right here is because of a mask. So if you go in here, you could see that basically I went and I just masked a very generic path out here. And where you go to the ending right here where you see the stack of keyframes is when really the heavy work happens as far as that movement goes. So that way we can get it to feel, to feel as natural as possible without doing anything, you know, absurdly obnoxious to kind of take you out of the, the moment, so to speak. And the key with this is um, you just want to make sure everything looks a little bit natural. So if I zoom in here, and I know I'm going to go in quite a bit, but at 400%, let me bring this down so you can see a little bit better. So at 400% as well, when we're scrubbing through the timeline, what ends up happening is this mask right here is really going to be the determining factor of the shape of the character right here. Because pretty much all this, uh, this glitch effect that's happening around here is kind of spreading out across on the bottom layer. So with this mask is you want to try to get it as, you know, relatively close as possible. That way it doesn't look too bad because if you leave it, um, like I did originally where I basically just masked out the whole door, this whole glitch effect would appear throughout the whole door and it would kind of look a little odd and kind of uh, take you out of really the moment because the effect doesn't look as good. And as you can see, I didn't really put that much um, refinement into it. It's just very, you know, um, at least something close to being the shape, as long as, you know, you can't really tell. And if you feather it out, it uh, makes a little bit better. So you can't really see it. So what ends up happening is um, in this shot right here, uh, the reason this stays transparent is because on the main timeline, we want the main character to come in and we don't want him to get cut off. We still want this natural looking um, light coming through the window. And one of the key components back here is you can see this too, and I'm gonna go back to 400% on the main timeline, is if you pay attention, there's a very uniform look, and you can actually see it here. There's a very uniform look as far as the noise goes since we did shoot this in lower light. So when we scrub through it, you can see, and like right here, when the player does it at half resolution, it does a really blurred kind of look. So you can see it right here where there's a big difference between what we did after and what was the original. And there's better ways to blend it. But what I ended up doing was just to keep things simple. And since we were running on a crunch time, I ended up taking, um, duplicating this layer again, bringing it back and then adding a hold frame. So what a hold frame does is it basically creates a still image of the frame. So all I needed was that same door up until that point. And that's what ends up causing the film grain to freeze. 
because normally when the picture's moving, that's when the uh, random noise is generated and it moves around. But with the still frame, you're basically freezing that noise into place. So when you play it back, you can really see the difference between it being a video and it being a picture. So what I did when coming through here is if you notice um, in my effects, I added 15% noise. So what that ends up doing is it kind of recreates the, the randomness of the grain and the noise in the background. So it seems a little bit more natural that you can see. And if I were to go in here and here's at 200% and you could see it. So it kind of blends in a little bit better. And if I were to turn off the noise, you could see the big difference between it being, it still has grain and noise from it, but this is from the original picture. And if I turn it on, it kind of blends a little bit better with the background. And because this is so small, it's normally harder to notice, but because I'm the one who's editing it, I can kind of tell. Um, and with that being said, basically what we did was we lined it up so that we have a small clip of him standing here. And then when it ends here is when it comes into the main clip right here where he's already standing in the doorway right there. So basically all it is is a bunch of layers um, and we masked it out. We masked out a hole in the door. Um, we made a still frame so we can get that same background um, of the door so we can basically put that over top of him, of the hooded man walking in. So that way it looks a little bit more natural and it's like, okay, look, he just pops. Once that clip ends, he's already there. So it kind of fakes it in there. And then for that too, one of the things it was... Um, not much of a challenge, but it kind of takes out the realism for it if you don't pay attention to it. And it's a really subtle thing is that if I turn off this table, and this is also still image from the table, you can see here that aside from this mask, that if I come through, his shadow ends up walking across the table. Right there. So you can see that something should have been behind that window before he gets there. Now, we debated on whether we wanted to remove it or not. I personally thought it was pretty interesting to kind of like give a subtle reference as something is there because, you know, spooky spirits and stuff, you know, to leave a shadow would be really cool. But the consensus was that at the same time, because this was a last minute low budget short film, it probably would come across more like we forgot it or a mistake. So simple fix to that was that when we get to this part about right here in the normal clip, I took a still frame of this, basically put it over top of the layer so that instead of his shadow casting, I basically fade into it. So it just completely darkens the whole thing. So you don't even notice his shadow. And then when he appears is when it comes back into movement. So it looks a little bit I wouldn't necessarily say um, natural, but it's less noticeable, which is what we were going for in that aspect. So that's really how I did that clip. It's very super simple. It's just really masking techniques and um, really blending together just to give it a little bit more of a realistic look. Um, and then the second effect, which part of it you could see there in the glitch was mostly this clip where the hooded man sitting there and he's glitching in his seat. And this again was equally simple uh, as you might actually think. Very similar to what we did at the beginning. So basically what I ended up doing was because I just wanted to keep this simple and I wasn't even sure I wanted to use this effect. We were kind of spitballing this idea um, to kind of see how well it worked and it wasn't our intention to even have this in here when we filmed. So. What I ended up doing was I basically just took the clips. So I took this bottom layer and this bottom layer is the entire actual main clip of everything's happening on. So I duplicated that again and I put it above. Then just to see how it would look, I basically um, really just cut the chunks. And if I turn off this layer, you can see it. So basically um, the hooded man, he kind of jerks a couple times to his left. So basically I cut the clips to that. And then what I ended up doing was if you go in here, if you go to the effects panel right here, 
you can see all these keyframes I did with the chromatic aberrations and some optical shake. So it's actually part of uh, the VR effects here. If you go here and search an immersive video, it's actually this right here. So essentially what it does is it lets you manipulate the color location so you can go in and let's see what we see here so I could show you. So here's green if we're in here. So if we adjust it, you can see it kind of shifts the color. So basically, all I did for that was I keyframed every little bit where I wanted the color to kind of separate and do this nice glitchy effect on that. And that's what gave this effect of it kind of looking like he's just shifting through the colors. It's simple, just manipulating the colors on this effect. And when you keyframe them, that way it animates it so you can have them expand, come back and do all kinds of stuff. So again, this one's a little bit more involved just because there's a lot more keyframes you might need to do, but depending on what you're doing, it might be relatively simple. Um, but as you can see, I kind of went all out. I wasn't really doing much else with the project and I thought it was a fun experiment. And it turned out actually to really improve the overall quality and production value of the little piece. Even though we really hadn't, it was basically came up with in like five minutes. As I was spitballing ideas, I thought it was cool just to play with something of a, kind of like a horror aesthetic. And I really wanted to test the uh, black magic sensor um, in low light situations. And it really, you know, as much as you could see this grain, the, what most people don't realize is we honestly shot this whole short in almost pitch darkness. We had one LED panel um, that was set to 56 Kelvin and it was beaming off the ceiling to kind of match the glow of these computers. And the rest of the lighting was just the computer screens in this room um, from all the Macs and stuff. And it, it really, to, to be completely honest, it really did way better than I was expecting it to. Um, but yeah, and so what ends up happening anyway, um, as far as this clip goes, so normally when you add the chromatic aberrations to the clip, it shifts the entire clip. So one of the benefits too of me duplicating this whole layer up top in the first place was that I can easily mask these clips out. So if you go here, it was a simple mask around the hooded man and it allows it so that way that this glitch effect does not bleed into the rest of the clip. So it doesn't affect the character sitting in the back, doesn't affect the computers all that much. Um, and the best part is because it's a glitch and it's, and it's gonna look unnatural, you don't have to do such a precise masking. It's a very quick um, outline of the character and you can pretty much get away with it since it's gonna be jittery anyway and it's gonna be moving. So it's gonna look believable as is. Um, so that's pretty much how I did that effect. It really wasn't that difficult. It, it was a little bit tedious and a little bit time consuming, but it really wasn't all that difficult to do. And it really adds to it because this whole clip was a lot different without the glitch effect and everything in it. It just, it, it didn't feel as scary. It didn't have so much tension into it. Um, so it was a real big difference for it. But there you go, folks. That was kind of a quick breakdown uh, to it. I know I didn't go into too much detail about specifically how to do stuff. And that's mostly because really all of this stuff that you can do is pretty basic stuff. Um, you could do in Premiere. Nothing I did was extremely complex. Um, pretty much you could figure out where everything is. Um, and I know a lot of people are actually um, kind of put off from dealing with Premiere because they're not sure about how to do some of this stuff. But really, in my personal opinion, once you figure out where everything is and you know what it does, you're pretty much golden with it. All you really have to do is eventually play with it. Like I said, when we originally even came up with the story and shot for this, none of the stuff there with masking or with the glitch effect were even on our brains at the time. When we pulled this into post and we started editing, that's when we were having ideas and we were talking about it, how we can make it better. And basically that's where all that stuff came from. Kim is an afterthought. So you gotta keep in mind that while you can film stuff a certain way, you can actually end up changing a lot to the story in editing um, if you know what you're doing and if you really have a vision for it. And I definitely recommend 
pretty much playing with anything. Cause usually what I'll do is I'll come up with a baseline edit, something that I'm pretty okay with and happy. And then from there, I'll kind of do small tweaks and then come up with ideas and stuff. And usually like, even in this point, I have a main timeline with a whole different ending than pretty much the one I ended up with. This is technically my alternate ending timeline um, that I liked it a lot better than the original one. So I just decided to stick with that. And that's basically how that happened. So definitely take advantage of all the tools you have. Um, and this is a prime example of it. Some simple stuff that you can do in Premiere really goes a long way. Uh, yeah, that's my advice for you guys. Just keep practicing with it. It's a lot of fun. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to doing more stuff like this because I just enjoy editing and I enjoy being able to play with a story in different ways than really was intended. It's all about like creative problem solving and I think that's the best. But uh, yeah, <laughs> that's really all I got for this. It was a pretty straightforward, simple video, but thank you.